This module focuses on the Rajput and Mughal era. During the 7th and 8th century, a new clan of people emerged who came to be known as Rajputs. They belonged to the warrior class of people and were located in Rajasthan and some central parts of India. The Rajputs were an image of feudalism and chivalry. Though they were devoted warriors, the Rajputs fought amongst themselves and weakened their empire. The first recorded Rajput kingdoms emerged in Rajasthan in the 6th century and small dynasties later ru ruled much of northern India. One Rajput of the Chauhan clan, Prithviraj Chauhan, was known for bloody conflicts against the advancing Islamic sultanates. The weakening of the Rajputs attracted the Turks, who invaded India on every given opportunity. The Turks were not only interested in India's wealth, but they also wanted to establish their empires and take over other kingdoms. Prithviraj Chauhan was defeated by the Turkish invader Muhammad Ghori. Ghori appointed one of the military slaves, Qutb Uddin Aybak, as the in charge. Aybak started a series of new rulers and thus arose the slave dynasty. Costumes from the Rajput era had a very strong influence from the classical age, which is the Gupta period. Here are some costumes worn by Rajput women. The choli, an upper garment heavily embroidered in the front and tied with strings at the back, also called angia, chola, cholaka and kanchuki. Cholaka, a fitted choli type blouse with an apron front, long sleeves of dark red brocade with white middle tied at the back with strings. Antarya, lehenga style of silk with purple, green and yellow stripes with lozenge patterns in white. The Ghagra. At its basic, it is two lengths of fabric stitched together at the selvage to form a tube and tied with a tunnel cord around the waist. It later evolved as more and more panels, flares or gheras were added. The Ghagra is a sumptuous garment developed to beautify dancers' twirling movements. It is usually worn with a tight-fitting bodice or choli. The drawstrings at the waist or izarband was left to fall at the sides and was finished with decorative tassels, cowrie shells, chumkas or minakari jewellery. The length of the ghagra varied and sometimes accompanied a churidar pajama. Rajput men used a variety of costumes. Some of these were chuga. This was a calf length tunic style with a wide richly embroidered border down the center front opening hem and edge of long sleeves, probably ruched, chalana, which were baggy trousers, moli or ushnisa, which is a turban. In the 12th and 13th centuries, Turkic and Pashtun invaded parts of northern India and established the Delhi Sultanate in the beginning of the 13th century in the former Rajput areas. During the 14th century, the Hindu Vijayanagar dynasty came into conflict with the Islamic rule and the clashing of the two systems caused the mingling of the indigenous and foreign culture that left a lasting cultural influence on each other. The Vijayanagar dynasty eventually declined due to the pressure from the first Delhi Sultanates who had managed to establish themselves in the north, centered around the city of Delhi by the time. In 1526, Babur, a descendant of Timur and Genghis Khan, established the Mughal Empire, which lasted for over 200 years. The Mughal dynasty ruled most of the Indian subcontinent by the 1600s. It went into a slow decline after 1707 and was finally defeated during the revolt of 1857. This period marked a great social change as the Hindu majority were ruled over by the Mughal emperors. Under the rule of Akbar, Religious diversity was tolerated, scholarly pursuits and various art forms were encouraged and promoted. The Mughal emperors married ro local ro royalties, allied themselves with local maharajas and attempted to fuse their cultures with ancient Indian styles, creating unique Indo-Arabic architecture, costume and various other arts. The men of the Mughal era used a number of different costumes. Let's look at some of the details of men's costume. Dhoti, Antarya, 
Nima, a short tunic made of fine material also called Nimtana or Nimcha. Jama, it was a lined garment, knee length, fitted at the chest and flares below the waist, worn as an outer garment. Chakdar Jama, a variation of, the, of a Jama with a U-shaped placket and a loop button at the waist. A ceremonial outer garment made of brocade material and often worn over an angarakha or kurta. Abho, a loose kurta-like garment worn as a cloak. Angarakha is a jama variation. Yaktahi jama is a jama without lining. A patka is a girdle or kamarband with very decorative patterns woven or embroidered on its panels worn usually over a jama by men. Sadri is a sleeveless jacket, waist length, worn over a kurta. Bagalbandi, a sleeveless waist length jacket with rich brocade and embroidery. Nadri, a sleeveless thigh length coat worn over kaba. A kaba is an outer vest fastened at the neck and the rest was left open. Pajama or izar, this means leg clothing, loose pair of drawers tied at waist. Postin is a coat lined with sheepskin. Chaftan, a long coat. Tahapnad is a belt or a girdle. Chagoshia is a four-cornered cap. The Kauchia is a coat without lining of Indian form with opening on the left side which was changed to open on the right side. The jama was the main garment along with the churidar pajama or ijars. This garment was created in two styles during Akbar's rule in the manner that would be acceptable to Hindus and Muslims. The Hindus fastened the cords of the jama on the left side while the Muslims wore the jama with the opening on the right side. Akbar also introduced new names for certain costume articles. The jama was sarbgati, a covering for the entire body. Ijar, pajama, was yar pirahan, a companion of the coat. Nimtana was tanzeeb or a jacket. Burka, chitra gupita or veil. Kulla is sarshobha, which is a cap. Maibaf, which is keshghan, which is a hair ribbon. Shal, param naram or shawl. Patka, katzeeb. Pay Avzar, Charandharan or Shoes. The Jama is usually referred to as any type of outer garment. It is also called Kaba, Jama, Jame, Baga, Jamadan, Meena, Takochia, etc. There is very little visible difference between Jama, Choga or an Atam Sok. All are long crossover robes. The Jama is usually referred to as any type of outer garment. It is also called Kaba, Jama, Jame, Baga, Jamadan, Meena, Takochia, etc. There is very little visible difference between Jama, Choga or an Atam Sukh. All are long crossover robes. Jama is side fastening frock coat worn for formal occasions whose distinguishing features are a tight fitting bodice, a high waist and a flared skirt that reaches at least to the knee. The Yaktahi Jama was an unlined Jama. The original crossover style had a straight skirt in heavy thick fabric. To suit the Indian climate, variations were made. The lightweight cotton was too limp for a straight cut, so slits and kalis were added for a more interesting shape. The chakdar jama was a style variation of the jama with side slits. Displayed here is a picture of a typical Mughal men's costume. The man's robe is of white cotton with repeating staggered patterns of embroidery, floral motifs in gold wrapped threads with and floss silk. Long sleeves, front opening, floor length gathered skirt, 18th century India. This elegant robe would have been worn by a man at one of the courts of northern India. The floor length gathered skirt was popular in the 18th century in contrast to the shorter robes of the previous century. The staggered floral design is typical of late Mughal design and is often seen printed on textiles as well as embroidered as in this example. 
Like the jama, the angrakha is a long-sleeved gown or coat. Shorter knee-length versions were called angrakhi or kamari angrakha. They were also called anga, aba and vasa. A key feature is the round-edged, sometimes triangular opening at the front and the inner panel known as parda, which is inserted into the cut-out portion of the yoke to cover the chest. Some angrakhas are made of bodice and skirt joined together at the waist, while others are tailored like a panelled coat. The fullness of the skirt varies, as does the shape of the front opening. These garments were fastened at the neck, underarm, chest and waist with fabric ties or cords. Occasionally, slits were provided to allow greater mobility. The chuga. This means a long-sleeved garment. It was usually loose-fitting, open-fronted yoke, robe which varied greatly in length, fullness and fabrics used. The basic cut was the same. The main body was made of two rectangular lengths of fabric taken directly from the loom, one for the front and one for the back. The sleeves were formed by stitching a straight piece of fabric to the upper selvage of each side at right angles. Seams were rarely cut on the curve, which meant there was very little wastage. The fullness was increased by sewing additional vertical panels to the sides and triangular gussets were stitched to the underarms to allow for more mobility. The short sleeve choga was called farzi. The atamsuk or giver of comfort to the soul is a long loose garment worn like an overcoat designed to protect the wearer against extreme winter temperatures. Some styles were cut like the angurakha, others made of heavier fabrics, wool or quilted cotton or silk were cut longer like a full length jama. Fabrics used were silk, brocade, cotton and wool, usually quilted to add softness and warmth. The Chapkan and Achkan The Chapkan and Achkan marks the transition between the Jama, Angrakha and Chuga. The main method of fastening with buttons and buttonholes and introduction of sewing machines brought about fundamental changes in style. It had a combination of fastenings. The parda with its inner tie strings were replaced with a line of buttons placed closely together as far as the waist, while the bottom half was fastened in the traditional manner with inner panels and tie strings. Chapkan evolved into the achkan. Most of the tie strings were completely dispensed with. Buttons then became more ornamental and no longer concealed. Achkan was a more tight fitting around the wrists, chest and waist taping out at the hips to become flared around the knees. Ornamental borders were added around the band collar, front edges and hems. Bagalbandhi and Sadri. It means that which ties to the side. It was a shorter version of the Chagdar Jama. Some style variations were called Chaubandhi and Labeda. Angrakhi is for a shorter version of Angrakha. Sadri is the name given to a short-sleeved or sleeveless jacket worn over long-sleeved garments. The pajama. This was worn by both men and women. Early styles were tight pajamas fitted around the legs but loose at the waist, which was worn under the jama. Akbar renamed the pajama Yar Pirahan, inseparable friend, companion to the coat. There are different kinds of pajamas. These include the churidar pajama. This was cut on the bias. The legs are very narrow and cut much longer than the body so that the material forms folds or bangles around the ankles. Dogri pajama. This was a cross between a sidha and churidar pajama. The kalyondar pajama was a very wide, full bottomed pajama consist consisting of kalis or panels worn by both men and women. Then it became an exclusive women's garment. Shalwar pajama was a straight pajama finished at the bottom with a poncha or a wide or narrow quilted band at the ankle opening. Sida pajama was wide at the waist and tapered down to a narrow ghera at the bottom. During the reign of Nadir Shah, costume styles evolved. Red colored garments open till the girdle or waist and fastened with an insertion, pointed neck and richly embroidered collar. The cap was pointed and the tip pressed down, wrapped with a cloth and pinned with sarpesh. 
the old kaaba was worn jama which was longer than the earlier style white trousers or pajama boots or slippers curved at the tip over the jama was worn an overdress with short sleeves embroidered collar or rich ribbons this overdress was closed at the chest area the jama and the angrakha were the most common style the jama grew in length became high waisted long and trailing and the hem dramatically increased the kurta was a new version of the nima or nimcha fine material with white on white embroidery the achkan and the sherwani were also variants of the angarakha the muslims wore their tob- turban tucked at the left and the pandits on the right the pandits wore tight trousers or churidars while the muslims wore pajama or loose drawers importantly during this period amir khusrao began using hindi words or vernacular words to describe fabrics the women of the mughal era used different costumes the extravagant costume in this picture would have been worn by a dancer or noble woman at the flamboyant lucknow court although the fashion for exaggeratedly wide trousers like these worn under a full short overdress was popular in several centers of north india during the first half of the 19th century other costumes worn by women were peshwas an ankle length dress of colored muslin richly embroidered its upper portion is similar to the jama and the lower part is a flared skirt with flounces of gold lace choli an upper garment from the gupta period also called angiya chola cholaka kanchuki the front is heavily embroidered and the back is tied with strings ghagra an enormous gathered skirt tied at the waist with draw strings also called ijarband angrakhi was a women's wear kurta kamri angrakha was a waist length kurta kulla is a pointed skull cap sadri this was worn beneath the angiya choli by women you have come to the end of this unit to summarize in this unit you have learned about the range and diversity of costumes ornaments and accessories during the middle ages thank you